The FX 6300, it's the CPU that my entire YouTube channel is run off of and it's in the rig behind me. So, is it worth it and is it worth its $60 price tag? Let's find out. Okay, so let's get into the review. So the first thing you have here is the FX 6300 box and then you have the CPU inside. Now I know I just said that the CPU is in the rig behind me, but it's actually not. Back here I have a Phenom, an old Phenom. I want to say, yeah, I, I, it's not a Phenom, I have an A4 7300, it's just a dual core processor, I just have it in there just so I can have something up to show you guys. But here I have the 6300, and if you get a look at the 6300, it's actually kind of different than the Intel CPUs. The, the AMD CPUs actually use PGA. Now, what I'm doing right now is you're not supposed to do it all, I'm rubbing my fingers on the back of the pins. Now, some of you guys who know anything about processors may be, cr may be cringing to yourself right now, but the thing is, is that... These pins are actually pretty sturdy. That's the one thing I like about this processor. The other processor that I have in the rig behind me now, the A4 7300, I actually accidentally bent when I first put it into my motherboard because I was new to PC building at the time and I was sitting there, I'm like, why isn't it going in? And I just pushed it down and bent a couple pins and I had to fix those and that was really not that much fun. The one thing that's nice, I like the construction build of this. It's actually kind of heavy. It's kind of a heavy processor. Uh, it's actually kind of cool. I kind of, for some reason, I like it when processors are heavy. I just like when processors have weight to them. I don't know why. The other thing I like is I like the heat shield. This heat shield is actually different from the Intel heat shields because the Intel heat shields have more of a pyramid. They have more of like a stacked cake type of design to them, while this is more just square. The other thing that I like about this is when you're first installing this, the CPU, I, for some reason I keep wanting to call these GPUs because I've been doing a lot of reviews on the 1050 Ti lately. But if I accidentally say GPU, I mean CPU. So... The one thing I do like about these CPUs though is that it has a little gold triangle and now all CPUs have the gold triangle it's to let you know that hey if you're if you're not lining it up properly the processor won't function. Now on the Intel CPUs I don't have one on me right now I currently gave my Intel i5 one of my older i5s to someone and they are borrowing it for something. I don't have an Intel CPU to show you guys for comparison now but you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Now, now here, on the AMD sockets, especially on the motherboards, the motherboard pins actually are pretty easy to see. It's actually pretty easy to see when you're installing this the first time, because the first time that I installed the A4 7300, when I first built my PC, along with bending the pins, I also put it in backwards, and I didn't really know what I was doing, so thankfully, I got that corrected because someone was there to help me, but still, that's the one thing I do like. So, the FX 6300. Let's start getting into the review and the benchmarks. So, the first thing I did is I ran Cinebench R15. So Cinebench is actually a really good way to show multi-core and single-core speeds. The problem with this version that I have here is that I'm still trying to figure Cinebench out, so please forgive me if there's any mispronunciations, because I'm still trying to figure this out. The only way I've seen that Cinebench is on YouTube, and I just downloaded it because I thought, hey, it might be cool for this review. So the FX 6300 came in with a Cinebench score of 416. Now, for comparison, the Xeon X5650 has 12 cores and 24 threads, it runs at 2.66 GHz, which is actually a lot less than the FX6300, which runs at 3.5 GHz and has, I want to say, yeah, 14 MB of total cache, and that's divided into 8 MB of L3, and the rest is L2 and L1. So, compared to the FX6300, the Xeon got 1279 Cinebench score, which is pretty explainable because it has 24 threads, and the, the FX6300 only has 6. It has 6 cores and 6 threads, but if you want to see why it doesn't exactly have that amount of threads, you can go ahead and click the link up in the corner, because I made a video about this already where I explained the downside to Bulldozer. So, compared to the Xeon, the FX6300 actually did kind of poorly. It got about a third to a fourth Depending on which test I'm running, it got about a third or a fourth of a Xeon. Now, the Intel 3000K series processor here got, excuse me, an Intel 4770K got an 822 score. That's actually about twice as much as what the FX6300 got, which, like I said earlier in the video, got 416. Now, the reason that it's doing this is because, and like I've explained in this other video, the FX6300 doesn't really have, it's not really a true 6-core processor. Yes, it has 6 cores, but it's not really a true 6-core processor. Like I said, if you want to learn more about the specifics of that kind of stuff, watch the video. So, what is the FX6300 really meant for? Now, like I've said, the FX6300, I've been using it now for 
geez, about a year and a half now, and I haven't had a problem with it. It's actually, I do like the processor. I definitely have a lot of nostalgia for the FX line, especially when I've had different chances to upgrade and different opportunities to upgrade to like i3 or i5. I've stuck with the FX 6300. Now, a lot of you may be saying, oh, well, if it did so poorly compared to like a Xeon or a low-end i7, why are you sticking with it? The simple reason is content creation. Now, for those of you who aren't really savvy on content creation, content creation relies on a lot of threads. Generally, videos don't use a lot of high single core speeds, especially with Cinebench. This kind of stuff is generally multi-threaded. The FX series has very high multi-threaded performance, and that's actually really good for content creation and editing videos and rendering stuff. Now, the reason for that is because a lot of it can be parallelized. <laughs> One of the fans just kicked in. The reason that it's actually pretty important is because the FX6300 has such a really good, it actually can beat out some lower end, like the i5-2500K, I want to say it can beat that out in multi-threaded, but in single-threaded, it falls behind. But for me, that's really not that important because the multi-threaded score is really high. And like I said, it can be paralyzed. It's actually really good. And the FX8350 is actually really good as well. The FX4300, I really wouldn't recommend at this point, mostly because it's still a quad-core processor, but essentially you're getting a Pentium G4560 with that chip, which isn't exactly the greatest chip ever, but I digress. If you're looking for something cheap, the FX6300 is actually really good. It's actually a really good value, especially when you can buy them on sites such as eBay and Amazon, mostly on eBay for less than like $80, but on Amazon, it's going for about 100 mostly because of the cryptocurrency mining rage, which that's kind of understandable, especially with graphics cards. Now, if you've watched my other videos, I'm not going to get into the cryptocurrency mining stuff and the pricing of computer parts in this video. But all I'm saying now is that if you're into content creation, this processor definitely does do a really good job. But if you're more into gaming, I would go for something like an i5-2400 or an i5-2500K. Now, the reason for that is because gaming generally prefers high single-threaded speeds. Now, the FX6300 is not bad at gaming by any means. It's actually pretty decent. If you pair it with something like a 1060 or a 1070, it'll bottleneck the 1070, but the 1060 will actually be a pretty good match. But cards like what I have behind me, the 1050 Ti, actually is a really good pair for the, the 6300 and other high-end stuff like the 8300, mostly if you're doing content creation. But like I said, if you're focused on gaming, I would save up your money a little bit and buy like an i3-8100 or buy a cheaper DDR3 platform. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. If you want to do content creation, this processor definitely is what you want. But if you're more into gaming and that kind of stuff and more into single-threaded workloads like internet browsing and stuff, I would stick with an Intel processor, like a higher end Intel i3 or an i5. But if you're more into content creation, these CPUs definitely are great workhorses. Like I've said, I've been using this for a year and a half. I've been editing videos on it. It is definitely a dream. So. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and or subscribe and click here for more videos. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.